The substitution method is essentially the chain rule in reverse. And here's the definition, which isn't as important as to know how to use it. Um, it turns out that we can rewrite this part of the definition um, simply as the integral of f with a replacement instead of x, u, um, and we also have to replace the differential dx with du. Um, and that makes integration actually a whole lot easier. Now the trick with the chain rule is to choose the correct substitution. So if we take a look at the first example, um, I'll try and walk you through how you can pick the best substitution, but uh, some of it is a little bit tricky. So our first example is going to be to try to take the indefinite integral of 3x squared sine of x cubed dx. And the steps to this are, first of all, make a substitution. And the way that you do that is you choose some new letter u to represent a complicated part of the um, integral that you are working with. And so you'll notice in this integral that there's a sine x cubed. And we know how to take the derivative of sine x, but we don't know necessarily how to take the integral of sine x cubed. So what we do is we try to make this an easier question by substituting in a u for that x cubed. And so that's the substitution I choose for this case. Then I go to step two, and step two is to change the differentials, which is essentially to take the derivative. If you take the derivative of u, you get derivative of u, which we'll use du to represent. And if you take the derivative of x cubed, you get 3x squared times the derivative of x, or the differential of x. Now I found du. I can always rearrange this. If I wanted to find dx, it would be du gets divided by 3x squared. The next step is to actually make that substitution and to integrate. So my new equation looks like, well, 3x squared, and I did a substitution for the x cubed to become u, and I have a new equation for dx. dx is du over 3x squared. And uh, magically, because I picked the right one, those 3x squareds cancel each other out. Now I get the derivative, uh, sorry, the integral of sine u du, and I can get the answer to that, which is negative cos u plus c. And I go to my last step, called back substitution. And when I back substitute, I am putting my original um, variables back in. So I can just continue this. It becomes negative cos, and the u is equal to x cubed, and then plus c. And that's the indefinite integral of my original question. Let's take a look at another example. So here's my indefinite integral, and I want to uh, make a substitution. The best substitution is to make this part a lot less complicated, so I'm going to make that my u. That gives me x times u to the tenth. And I need to figure out what that dx is worth. Well, du is uh, 2x dx, and dx, therefore, is du over 2x. So I can put this in here now as du over 2x. And yet again, I cancel out those x's because I've picked the right one. And I now end up with u to the tenth over 2 du. The 1 half can come out. And using the power rule for integration, I get u to the 11th over 11 times 1 half plus c, which is u to the 11 over 22 plus c. And I finish off this question by using back substitution. So I made a substitution of x squared plus 5 for u. So I put that back in plus c. And I have my final answer in terms of x. A couple more examples.
This also works perfectly well with uh, other variables besides x, so um, you can still use a u substitution, make it the complicated part, which is this piece right here, and find out what your d theta is therefore worth. Then you can make a substitution. So this is now cos u, and d theta is du over 2. You can factor out the 1 half. And what gives you cos? Well, sine does. So this is 1 half sine u plus c. And finally, a back substitution of 2 theta plus 1. Oh, no, it was 2 theta minus 1. 2 theta minus 1 plus c. Sometimes the simple substitution doesn't always do the trick, so um, here's a little uh, additional tool that we sometimes need to use. Uh, we'll see that in this next example. So in this one, the complicated part is inside a square root. So 2t minus 1 is our substitution, and du becomes 2dt, and dt is equal to du over 2. When I do my substitution, um, there's your t, and this becomes the square root of u, and then dt becomes du over 2, and even changing uh, the square root u to u to the 1 half doesn't uh, fully help, because now I've got two variables in there. And what you need to do is, if the variables don't cancel out entirely, is you need to go back to your substitution question. You need to solve it for the variable that didn't cancel out. So if I add 1 to both sides, and then if I divide by 2 on both sides, I know what t is worth, and I can use that as another substitution. So I get u plus 1 divided by 2 times u to the 1 half uh, du over 2, uh, factoring out a couple of halves. There's a an half, and there's another half. Gives me 1 quarter out front. And then u plus 1 times u to the 1 half du. If I expand, I get u to the 3 over 2 plus u to the half du, and then I can take integration. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room with this one, so my integration becomes, I still have a quarter out front. Uh, now that I've taken the integration, I get left over u to the 5 over 2 using the power rule over 5 over 2 plus u to the 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 plus c, and solving this um, for, uh, so I don't have fractions within fractions, gives me 1 tenth u to the 5 over 2 plus 1 sixth u to the 3 over 2 plus c, and now I do my back substitution as my final step, and those u's were each worth 2t minus 1, and I have a final answer. Something a little different happens with definite integrals. Anytime that you have a definite integral, you now have an a and b value known as the limits of integration, and we have to change those limits of integration. So if we have a definite integral between 0 and 2, and so there's your limits of integration between 0 and 2, and I give you something quite complicated in here, x times 3x squared minus 1 all squared dx, as soon as I do my substitution, and I notice that this is the complicated part, 3x squared minus 1, I go through my steps 6x uh, dx, so dx is equal to du over 6x. As soon as I go and do my substitution, uh, there's my x, this is u squared, dx now becomes du over, oh, that shouldn't say dx, that should say 6x, 6x and these x's will cancel out, I have to change these two numbers. Because on my new function, those numbers are different than on my function with respect to x. And the way that I change them is I substitute these numbers in for x to calculate my new u substitution values. And so 0 squared 
times 3 minus 1 gives me a lower limit of minus 1. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. Minus 1 gives me an upper um, limit of integration of 11. Now I can continue on, but I, I had to make those changes. The integration from 0 to 2 is very different than the integration from 1 negative 1 to 11 um, if I had not done that. The next step, therefore, gives me the integration from negative 1 to 11 of u squared uh, du, and that's going to get divided by 6, or 1 sixth, and u cubed over 3 being evaluated between negative 1 and 11, which is 1 sixth, um, and then 11 cubed over 3 minus negative 1 cubed over 3, which turns out a grand total of 74. We can check this with the graphing calculator. Please do that. And the best way to check these questions is check this original one and see what it's worth. You should get 74. Your graphing calculator can handle that no problem by using the um, numerical integration key, um, x, 3x squared minus 1 squared, with x as the variable between 0 and 2, and you should notice that that's the same as if you punch this one in using a new f of x. You can still call it x, and you can still call it to this variable, or you can use u. You can use the letter u in here and call it the letter u as a variable. And now we need to change these a's to negative 1 and this b to 11. And again, you should come up with a total of 74. Go ahead and do it. Don't assume you know how to do it. Take a minute, pause the video, make sure you can do that. We actually don't have any more examples to do, so come to class ready to practice.